So in the last video, you watched me unbox the new media unit for the Focus ST, the project. Um, this video, we're going to fit it. Don't forget to give us a like, um, and we'll make some more videos. So it's now time to remove the old unit. As you can see, we've got damage on actual fascia, and I was originally going to place a fascia, but I found this unit that you saw in the other video, which replaces the whole lot. It's designed to just pull that CD player out, pull the fascia off, pull the hazard button out, however that comes out. It's got a new one, and it all just fits in place. So I'm going to start off by removing the old one and I'll show you how to do it. So to remove the old forge unit you're going to need to get hold of some of these. They're like little scimitar swords but they're forge removal keys that can be found on the net. I think these cost me like two quid delivered. And the, the idea of these is they slide in. Slide in. Oh wait I've dropped one. I'll drop another one. I'll drop the last one. Right. <laughs> so they slide in that way. So the flat edge is facing out. It goes down the hole and then you press them in to the centre of the unit, all four of them and it releases these springy clips which I'll show you when we take the unit out which then allows the whole unit to slide out so I'm going to go, I'll do this one while I've got the camera in my hand right, so that's locked in place now and you can, hang on, you can move it in slightly which releases the clip on the back so I'm going to stick the other ones in with a bit of luck you should be able to hear an audible click when it slides and locks into place like that, that click there. And it gives it the movement it needs to release it. Oh, there we go. I'd already done. <laughs> I'd already done the other corners to release the lock mechanism. This is very awkward with one hand. So just be careful when moving your head unit. You can rest your head unit on the gear stick like I'm doing there. The aerial cable pulls off, and the big master plug. You can see there. It's got a little little arm. There we are. A little arm, which doesn't do. There we go. <laughs> Crazy me. And then the unit is free. So now I've got the CD player out, I can show you how these lock into place. So these here, these spring out behind behind the trim and stops it from being able to be pulled out. So the idea of the little key is when they're in and you press them, it squashes the clip flat and allows it to slide out. So now we've slid it out, we we'll just need to undo a couple of screws and we can get the fascia out. So once you've removed your unit, You've got screw there to undo, screw there to undo, and then it should pull off, but we'll find out as we go along. Just be careful that obviously this is still attached in, and your hazard button is still attached in. I'm using a T25 Torx bit to undo these two screws. You can see, Torx is the star pattern. T25. So now you can see the screws are out. Mine's in really poor condition. I mean, obviously, the previous owner just snapped this, and it else's bit falling off. Um, it's snapped around where it actually screws in. Um, I think it pulls off, but I'm going to require two ones to do so. Um, I'm going to have a pull of this. <laughs> Sounds dodgy. Pull of this, and I'll get back to you. It does, in fact, just pull off, but it's very stiff. It almost sounds like to the point where you're breaking it, but you can see there, there's these clips in the bottom. Done one one side. Just need to get my fingers behind it. There we are. And that's my old knackered surround sound off. So theoretically, the new one should fit on now. But I may have to pull that hazard switch off because obviously they gave me a new hazard switch. I have a feeling that pulls off, but I'll have a look. It's only resting in place at the moment because I still need to adjust this hazard switch. But as you can see, the screen is bigger than the surround. The surround fits in nicely and the screen comes over the top. The hazard button comes, everything comes over the top because it's designed to fit this dashboard and as you can see it's going to fit around the climate control perfectly fine and then just clip into place now I need to have a look, you can see me, look how shiny it is, look how shiny it is and I just need to now see how it secures in and how to get this hazard button out it's weird, it's like I'm filming in a mirror we are going to need to pull these clips off that one there and that one there as they will be need to be pushed in place on the new fascia to hold it in, in place otherwise there is nothing to hold it in at the bottom they just pull off and push onto the new one. As we have to replace the hazard button, it's a bit tight, but it pulls out of this slot here, and you can undo the um, plug. Now I just need to figure out how the new hazard button and the old hazard button go together, because I think the new one replaces just this end bit, because obviously there's no electrics on the new one. So we have the whole old hazard button and the new hazard button. Now, there's no electrics with the new one, because the new one's the bottom one, so it must somehow come out of there and then slot into there. So I've got the old bit in bits, this eventually slides out the end, I had to pry up the end, on the edges there, sorry, 
just to get it to pop off. Inside was this little rubber thing, which I think is what makes the button clicky. Because it's designed to do that. And there is the shapes in the back of there, and them circles. So the same, there's them circles, so I'm going to pop it on and put it all back together and theoretically we should have a new button. Once you put that piece of rubber back in the middle of the switch, so everything lines up, all the way up, you'll be able to click it all back together and hear the clickiness of the button. If it doesn't click, it's probably not going to work, because I've just had experience that. So I squashed it all together, now clicks, and it works as a button. This is a simple test. We can plug it in. can hear it. Done. I can put it back in place now. So I'll we'll undo this. Drop it in there. You can see it sticks out the dash. There we are. Working hazard switch, which will then just push back in place. Like so. Now it's time to put this around. Well, now it's time to put the rest of the wires on, to be honest. So the first one I've done is this big giant plug. Lock it into place. You can see that's the big forward plug. Which goes to this um, IS. Well, I don't even think it is IS so adapter anymore. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Um, it's been a while since I actually fit the CD player. I've got the adapter to fit on here for the aerial. And I've got a couple of other bits that need to be fit onto there. So I'm going to grab the cables and we'll fit them on. So I have the GPS cable. As you can see, GPS antenna, even though it's upside down. This screws onto this one here. Now, the cable's lovely and long, so you could mount it somewhere in your dashboard. But because I don't know if it's going to have any poor signal to start with, because I've, I've got no idea. Oh, it's magnetic as well. Oh, and that's, that's good. That's really good. Um, because I don't know if it's going to have any poor interference at the moment in the back of the dashboard, I may as well just leave it like that attached to the unit and we'll just see how we go. If, if I end up having poor signal, I could move it around. Um, but to start with, I'm going to leave it on, leave it attached. We have the aerial adapter, which is here, that pushes in there. And then we've just got to undo these USB ones and connect one of the USBs in, and then connect that in the car somewhere. So I'm just going to undo that and push that on. So now I know how these fit. So I still don't get what that one's for. I think that's obviously for some optional extra that I don't have at this present time. But the two USBs will work. I'm going to feed the USBs down to there to my cigarette lighter because that's where they're going to be and then I'll plug this in when we're putting the actual head unit in so because there's going to be enough cables to try and tuck in anyway so I'm going to just run that in so if you remember from the old unit we saved these clips these clips just need pushing on preferably with someone with two hands <laughs> okay I need two hands to do it but you push these clips on on both on uh, both sides as you can see and that will allow it to clip into the dashboard and stay clipped into the dashboard so I'll do that because unfortunately I can't do it with my camera in my hand and people are going to say well use a tripod it's a bit awkward to use a tripod inside a car but you know I appreciate the effort I do have a tripod it's currently still up in the back of the garage because I used it for filming one of the other videos so I do have it um, I'm going to put these clips on they are with a little tap um, I managed to get them so they're nice and secure now um, I've disconnected these cables because for the time being there's no point in them being on because I haven't got a sub running at the moment and I haven't got no reversing cameras or forward facing cameras etc etc so not having them on yet that's why I've disconnected them because it just makes life easier putting it away but obviously if you had a sub you'd connect into in fact actually you'd connect into them ones there <laughs> um, but when I do the video is where I install a reversing camera and a front facing camera and whatever else we can install because I'll install everything I could possibly can for this unit because it's a clever bit of kit I will plug that back in and you'll see obviously in the video when I do it so the only ones I have to plug in is this black one here which goes in there and then that USB one which is there so my USBs are down there now you can see and that obviously goes in this USB 10 pin one just there which is USB it's time now to actually put this back in into the car then so I'm going to connect that on, connect that one on, like I said, and push everything back in. So now would be a good point to test that it works before everything gets in and clicked. Just notice there it's got an SD card slot. Check out the blue D carries logo in, in the mirror. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Right, so first position. Ooh, we have a red light. Look at that. Let's get the reflection. <laughs> it's so shiny. Look at the reflection. Look at the quality. 
Look at that Ford. It's like it knows it's in a Ford. What? Oh, Android. Obviously, it's an Android unit. The quality of that screen is superb. I really like that. And then we have static from the radio. Well, I ain't going to search for a radio station at the moment because, as we all know from previous videos, I cannot have music um, because then obviously I can't monetize them. But I will just scan and find a radio station and test that it works because I've just plugged the aerial in. I want to make sure it all works and I'll let you know. But look at the quality of that. So I've just checked to see if the sound does work and the sound does work, but I won't play it because obviously it's playing music. I mean, you can see the radio station, but it doesn't tell you what it is, it just gives you a frequency. So now it's time just to turn it back off. I push it back in the dashboard and make sure everything's secure, tight, and obviously it's not going to fall out. That's what I'm going to do now. It looks superb. Look at it! It's like a TV screen! I'll tell you what, it's made the car look so much modern inside now, having that massive screen. That is wicked. I just need to put the trims back together now. Which, can, oh no, what's happened here? Oh no, I need to put my trims back together. And that's it. It's all fit, it's all clipped in, everything's tight, everything works, the USBs are down there and I have a USB stick in that's playing. It's just, it, 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 is, it is what it is, you know. Um, I'm going to do another video which is a review which will show you all the apps and all the things it can do and we'll discuss the things I'm going to buy and add on to it because there's lots of things that this kit can do. But, oh my god, do I love it already. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching the video on how to install the Cicane media unit into the Focus ST. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and it's a fabulous bit of kit. If you'd like one for yourself there is a link below in the description just down there click it it'll take you straight to their site. Buy one. Bargain. They're on offer at the moment. Just, just do it. Brilliant piece of kit. If you want to blue this Gary's t-shirt or hoodie go to our Facebook page. Links in the description. Uh, they're on offer as well right now. They're dirt cheap. So go and have a look um, and see what you can get. We've also got stickers too now. Stickers. Want to get some stickers? All right. Thank you for watching. Peace. Leave us a like. See you in another video. Support our YouTube channel, go to our Facebook page and you'll be able to get some.